Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Sunday Sit Down. I'm Reverend Phil Dickey, and I'm here in our sanctuary. The last few, I know, right? The last few months, I think, we've been down in the studio, shooting down in the studio, and we are back here in the sanctuary to record the sit down this morning. Uh, partially because Mitchell is here with me. Hi, Mitchell. What's up? So, w- this is a fun throwback because this is where the Sunday sit down kind of began, was here in this space. Yes. Um, and then we, we switched to be down in the studio that Dexter set up in mm-hmm. the, the basement here at White Rock. Mm-hmm. And now we're back in the sanctuary because we only have this Sunday sit down and next week's Sunday sit down. And then we're going to be back. Then we'll person. be sitting down. We'll literally be sitting here in this space. In the sanctuary. Yeah, on June 13th. Yeah, so if you haven't, if you haven't heard the news, we'll be back in the sanctuary June 13th for worship. <gasps> yeah, it's very exciting. It's a big deal. And all the information you need is at wrumc.org slash reopen. That's a really great slug. Right? Reopen. We've been slash. waiting for that one for a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, so originally we were doing August 1st was going to be our push to be back in the sanctuary. Yeah, so we, yeah, we... We've been working with an August one kind of internal line because, you know, we weren't getting much guidance from the CDC, uh, which then influenced how the denomination approached the, In the, the Dallas situation. County and and there's yep. no doubt that we've been fairly conservative with our reopening policies and, and protocols. And so we were working on this uh, timeline. And then the CDC came out, right, and said... Uh, masks are optional uh, for fully vaccinated folks, uh, which started, I think, a chain reaction of, of different entities, organizations, institutions, yeah. reevaluating on the fly. And so we got kind of caught up with that, along with our bishop making a statement that masks are now optional for uh, attendees who've been uh, you know, congregants, guests who have been fully vaccinated. And so August 1 just felt like six years away. <laughs> You know, at that point. Right. Um, and so we have been uh, doing a very ambitious thing, which is preparing for uh, in-person worship yeah. um, inside uh, rather rather quickly, as June 13th is right around the corner. Turns out it's two weeks from today. Turns out it's two weeks from today, which means, you know, um, there's a lot of things that we have to do. Right. To prepare. Uh, of course, uh, one of those is reorienting how we. Yeah, if you didn't stream. notice, right, like behind us, right now <laughs> is the sanctuary, which means right. all of our equipment and everything is on this side, and so obviously we have to flip everything. So. Yeah, and and Dexter's done a great job of uh, deconstructing and taking all the bits from the balcony and and putting it um, in the chancel, <laughs> and so we've got we Dexter primarily has to figure out a way to redo. Um, the sound booth up, up top. No pressure. Well, also, yeah, no pressure, no pressure. Dex. June 13th, Dexter. He's like... Two, two weeks from today. He doesn't look happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> but we also have uh, new cameras coming in that are going to allow us to, um, you know, change uh, and adapt to, to in-person worship while trying to keep as high quality as possible of our online space. So so, so we're not going to set up an iPhone on the front view? <laughs> yeah, if you were... Uh, <laughs> Before Dexter came into our lives, uh, we would have a tripod on the third or fourth pew back there, and it would have an iPhone on it, which was barely serviceable, uh, depending on who set up the who, iPhone. Who ran it? Yeah. So now we, you know, and then Dexter came and, and we got a better kind of wide shot of the experience on Sunday morning, mainly as a way to kind of just be in the online space and for folks who just need to tune in, well, you know, because they're traveling. Sure. But now we recognize that, you know, because of the, the really hard work, difficult work of adapting in the pandemic, right? Mm-hmm. You know this. We, I we, do. We, we realize that online space is not a secondary, lesser than space right. than being in person. It is an opportunity for us to be, um, be involved and connected to folks all across the country, all across the world, while also allowing us to build community um, online. And so I think that's a really great thing. Um, and so we want to lean into it. Hence why we're, you know, we're not just back uh, now where we've got to make some adjustments to make that happen. Yeah. And one of the things that has been a point of conversation a lot, I'll put it that way, among our staff is, is how do we do that, right? How do we make sure that we're being as equitable as possible in the experience for all, right? Because we recognize that many of you have come to join us um, in the midst of this pandemic 
not from the Dallas area. Some from the Dallas area found us, which is really awesome. Um, totally. And started joining us right. in the midst of this online and now have been showing up for our, our worship out in the parking lot, which was our last one today too. We can right. talk about that maybe right. too. Um, uh, but we also, we've been really trying to figure out and, and working hard along with Dexter to figure out like what does this hybrid experience look like so that it's a good experience um, for everybody, right? right? So it's it's really hard to be in person and not have the, the people who are in person with you be the priority. And so we've been in a lot of conversations and really like like scratching our heads and, yeah. and committing to creating this hybrid experience that's going to be, um, I can't say as e- like equally the same experience, because it's just not the same experience, right? These are not the same thing. Right? Jim Keat, who's actually going to be our guest next week, o- often says that um, virtual is not the opposite of reality, right? Virtual is the opposite of in-person. And so these right. are both real experiences that we have sure. in these worship times. But the, the reality is, like, it just takes a lot of work to make sure that, that we don't lose the people who have joined us in the midst of all of this, um, whether you're in Massachusetts or Missouri or Colorado or South Carolina like, or, or Italy, right? <laughs> like, yeah, totally. Like people who are joining us from all random places, like we want to make sure that you still as, feel as much a part of who we are in this mm-hmm. worshiping space um, and, and don't, get, don't get left behind. Yeah, and it's, a mat- it's an act of hospitality. It's an act of discipleship right. uh, when we invest in online spaces and... Um, the truth is, uh, we know that that it's an effective space. And you're right. It's the the experience. This shift will be different, right? Reorienting, right. like for the past I don't know, sixty three weeks, we've been uh, very aware that that our folks are right here, right? Um, but we we now we have to kind of. Um, shift our thinking and mindset and I you know I've been fairly honest about it like I'll do my best to to make sure that I'm you know aware that folks are watching online but our attention will be drawn to the folks in the room and rightfully so I think but because it's not a digital first service it'll be truly a hybrid Um, and I think that means that the experience will shift and change a little bit Um, but we aren't (laughs) That's not all we're doing. We're going to right. try to create some digital first um, right. spaces so that we can remain uber engaged with, with online community. Right, well, and, and that's so much of the sit down was, I called it kind of our narthex experience, right, for our right. online service, yeah. that, where we used to have the narthex where you'd walk in and we'd greet you and talk and chat and have it. I say we like I was actually here before the pandemic, but I was the one walking through the door being greeted. But anyway. Yeah, totally. Uh, so. The Sunday sit down has kind of been this like digital first Narthic experience. And once we're back in person on the 13th. I mean, yes, it has. It's a little more. It's we should be honest about the type of conversations that happen in the Narthex. It's not like we have like <laughs> the depth of a sure. Holy Spirit conversation just <laughs> unfolding every week. You in don't the have Jack Levison. Out no, of the Jack Levison's like, not. I mean, Jack, if you're watching. Love to have you as one of uh, the members of our hospitality come, come team. Great people, yeah, yeah. totally. Um, but but yeah, I think sure. that's the feel yes. we are after, right? Is like right. kind of a space for us to engage in conversation, um, kind of not warm up, but get a little bit warm up, right? yeah. uh, Get acquainted to like, all right, this is what I'm going to yeah. be doing over the next several, uh, you know, minutes and and I guess hour and a half, and uh, and that's been awesome. And, and in some ways too, it it, it provided a, a discipleship like learning study component that yeah. if you just come to worship, you, you don't get. Right. And, and so the question is like, well, how do we continue with that? Yeah. Yeah. Do I, you know? I was like, we didn't talk about this beforehand. Should we, how much should we share? Yeah. We're, we're looking to launch. I, I mean, can I say this on? Uh, sure. We're, it's not. Yes. We're, we're very do, transparent. We're, church, we're transparent. Though. Um, we really want to launch a fully online campus. Like, that's our goal. Part yeah. of the reason of, of me coming on staff here was to really launch a full online campus, meaning that um, it is primarily digital first, right? And, and we're looking at Sunday night being the time that we kind of launch this, this I don't even, we haven't even have a name for it yet, right? But this, this digital experience that we're going to have where we'll invite you, um, again, digital first to, to come and experience and be invited in. And while Sunday mornings are very much membership driven in the church world, right? Like typically people who come to a church on Sunday mornings are either members or they're guests who, you know, typically are our ideas. We want to drive them into membership. 
right. to drive them into a relationship with the community, long-term relationship with the community, for sure, because it is a communal act, what we do in worship. And that's right. not to say community doesn't exist in, in digital spaces, right. but there's something that can't be replicated when we're embodying the same space, uh, you know, passing the peace, right. uh, what, <laughs> whatever that looks like now. <laughs> uh, you know, like there's just nothing, we can't, that is a unique experience and, yeah. and worshiping together in community in person is unique. Uh, th- we can, I think, find unique community in the digital space and, and in really needed um, in hopes to, I think, to do a wide variety of things, right? You talk, we don't have a name for this thing. It's literally the idea has been, uh, it lives on a whiteboard right now right. and in our hearts and minds, but... Uh, really, really dear in my heart. Right. <laughs> but, but we are very excited about, about what that offering will be, and we think it'll be worthy of um, investment and time yeah. and, uh, and all that. Yeah, and my, my thought on this, too, is that um, it... Maybe we'll get there eventually, but it may never be a membership thing, right? We may right. never have, or again, hopefully we will in the long term, but at least starting out, we're not going to be like, hey, come and join this, whatever this specific experience is. It may be more of kind of like a subscription kind of thing, right? We're like, you may have your church that you go to on Sunday mornings if you live mm-hmm. in, um, again, like South Carolina, but, and that's great. We hope that you do. But then this will kind of be supplemental material or supplemental experiences right. that you'll have the opportunity to be a part of, just like you may read the Dallas Morning News and the New York Times or something like right? Like What? I, I know. Two news organizations in one day? And you may even pay subscriptions to both of them. Just saying. Well, one's worthy of it, for sure. Ooh. 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 Fill in the blank on which one you're... Uh I'm just kidding. Let's not go there. Uh, because we might have... You don't want to get me started. <laughs> that good? No, I mean, we move on. Okay, move on, moving move on. along. So you I tried th- to, and then I didn't let you, but now let's move on. <laughs> I, I'm excited for this because I believe... I do a lot of research too, right? And I look at a lot of like Barna's research and stuff. And the younger generations, millennials especially and below, millennials, Gen Z, this is the, the way moving forward. Right, like they're yeah. just as interested in either a hybrid or fully online w- worship and or discipleship mm-hmm. engagement as they are as in person. Now, uh, like the older generations beyond millennials, above the millennials, I guess, um, they still really value this idea of being back in person. But based on Barna's research, they've said like, once you hit millennial age and younger, they're kind of like, mm, I could go either way. Do you identify as millennial? I do. Okay. Um, the term, late, I think lately, is geriatric millennial is what I am. <laughs> Okay. That's that's the thing like that's really happening right now is geriatric millennials. All right. Uh, Sure. Um, Yeah, I think, I think there's a unique opportunity for the church, especially a church that has a theological position like we do, takes a social position, the social positions that we do to carve out a really important space online. Uh, truth is, there are a lot of churches that are already in their spaces, right? They have been for a long time. They have been for for a long time. Theologically, we're very different than those churches. Right. And so the question becomes like, well, what do you do for the folks that, that don't have access to maybe, uh, you know, our theology, yeah. our theological posture? Um, it, it, and how do we provide space for them? Yep. Because, you know, um, I think of Tyler, Texas. Right. Right. Or... or um, <laughs> the entire state of Arkansas, uh, <laughs> right? Where, where there may not be um, a theological uh, fit for folks in, the, in their communities. Right. And so we have a responsibility, if we're gonna take evangelism seriously, to, to try to figure that out. Um, and I think that you know, on, an online campus gives us the best possibility of creating a laboratory so we can try a bunch of things, but also trying to build deep uh, relational um, you know, community while being solely online. Yeah. It's a fascinating, um, it's a fascinating, fascinating thesis. Sure. Right? Yeah. And, and I think there will be lots of invitations for folks to get involved in different ways too, right? Like we're going to, we're really going to, we're taking a break from our day after Sunday podcast because yep. we're going to really invest and re reimagine what we can do with mm. podcasting in the, hmm. 
<laughs> Sounds like yeah. a good idea for a series. Um, reimagine what podcasting can really do, as well as a new platform we're playing with as well for, for podcasting and live podcasting and how you can be involved in the kind of Q&A of podcasting. Um, Dexter, you heard of Fireside Chat. <laughs> Phil loves it. I love it. I love it. Here's why I love it so much, because the downfall of podcasting for me has always been, as a podcaster, the engagement piece. Right. And that, I mean, it's, So we're looking at intentional platforms where we can engage, and it's not just consumption, right? And I think the biggest thing for me, the driving force for everything I'm, I'm trying to do in digital ministry, and I hope that we're trying to do in digital ministry, is it's not just about broadcast, right? Like, like radio's great, TV's great, but... As the church, we don't want to be just broadcasting. We want to be engaged with people. Yeah. And so we're looking to, to either build platforms or in, be in cooperation and collaboration with platforms who are really driving this idea of engagement. Sure. And Fireside Chat is actually our beloved Mark Cuban <laughs> is an investor in, yeah. uh, in this, this platform. And so, right. yeah, I am really excited about it because I you think it's going gonna, gonna to do a little bit of leveling the playing field for, for rather sure. than just talking at people, allowing us to engage with people. Yeah, which is the key, right? And, totally. and it's really, I think, our, our, one of our best qualities here at White Rock is this relational engagement piece, right? Yep. And it's why we've been, I think, successful as a church is because we've paid attention to the burrowing effect of Dallas, and we're in relationship with our neighbors. Yep. That can feel like an in-person experience only, but it doesn't have to be. Sure. And so I think it just it requires us a little bit of imagination and um, in a willingness to say, okay, our digital spaces are worthy of our time, energy, our, our membership vows, right? Uh, right. Digital spaces are worthy of our presence, our prayers, our gifts, our service, and our witness, right? Mm -hmm. And um, and we want to be proud of, of of those spaces too, um, like we are very proud of our in-person experiences um, in worship and in uh, classes and cohorts and. Um, ministry programs. I yeah. mean, it's just, it's worth, it's worth that work. And, and along this, I know we're, we've only got a couple minutes left, but along this, one of the ways we'll, we'll message that so we have like all in person, right? That's not yeah. hybrid, but just specifically in person experiences. We're going to have all digital experiences, right? Where it's, that's going to be the driving force. And then we're going to have hybrid and we're going to have the ability to, um, to really invite people into beyond just worship, like we'll have hybrid worship, but even a lot of our discipleship opportunities, yeah. we're going to really try to stretch that as well. Yeah. So we're piloting it with a kind of pastor's Bible study that's been just awesome through this whole pandemic. It has been awesome. Yeah. Um, 8 a.m. on Wednesday mornings, right? There are some people that want to sit across the table and drink coffee with one another and like yep. dive into scripture, which is great. That's what I want to do. We also have folks that are a part of that that uh, don't have the ability to be in person. Right. Um, and so, yeah, how do we do both at the same time? We'll need a lot of grace as we figure it out. But right. I think it is doable. Yep. I mean, corporations figured it out a long time ago, right? How to like tel do teleconference work while also being in person. And so can the church expand its reach? And honestly, it's a va it, can we? It has value because the more folks that are engaged in the conversation, the richer the conversation is. Absolutely. Like, especially yeah. around scripture and, and studying the Bible. We want diverse opinions. How do we get diverse opinions? We make the spaces more accessible. Yeah. And, and one of the easiest ways for us to do that is to not just discard our Zoom accounts, even though like, <laughs> you know, they're kind of expensive. Even, even though many of us would love to discard our Zoom accounts. But totally. There's still value. It's there. just nice to know it won't be only Zoom. Right? right? Like, right. Yeah. Yeah. Even if you don't live in Dallas, but you make a trip to Dallas for whatever reason, well, you can actually come join us. Like, that's just a really great thing that yeah, we weren't totally. able to do in the, totally. for the last year or so. For sure. How many weeks will it have been when we get, by the time we 65. get back? 65. 65 weeks. Yeah. That is crazy. Whew. So the other thing we're going to do is Tiny Desk Theology. Totally. We're going we're gonna to try to pilot that as a hybrid experience as well. So as June 8th. Our, our Bible study. Yeah, June 8th. So not this Tuesday, but next Tuesday. What are we talking about? <laughs> we're talking about angels, demons, and other supernatural beings. My favorite. <laughs> we, we don't need to spend a whole you lot of time You believe in here. ghosts? Do I have to answer yes or no? Because no. as a nine... Don't make me you choose one or the other. I just, I, it's just one of the questions I like to ask people. Well, we're going to talk about ghosts. We're going to talk about angels. We're going to talk about demons. We're going to talk about fairies. And Satan. We're going to talk about trolls. Not just the ones on Twitter. Uh, we're going to talk about Satan. It's going to be great. 
It's going to be amazing. We're going to read First Enoch. Okay. Have you ever read First Enoch before? I've not. I haven't either. Turns out it's a really important book if you want to understand angels, demons. And Join things. us online or in person for a hybrid <laughs> opportunity to talk about demons. Yeah, it's going to be crazy. Hey, we're going to take a break before we have worship here. Mitchell, thanks for joining me. Yeah, and uh, you know, <laughs> on a more serious note. <laughs> Beyond not angels, that demons. demons aren't serious. I'm sure they are. Um... We're really excited about being back in person. June 13th yeah. is going to be awesome. We, um, we don't have any sort of restriction in, in terms of capacity. That makes some of us kind of, uh, like when I went to the Mavs game uh, on Friday, Friday night. Wah, wah. Yeah. Hey. But what's going to be awesome is like there's an opportunity for you to be in person on June 13th. If you're comfortable with it, we want you to be here. Um, and we... We think it's going to be a really beautiful kind of way to begin our summer. Yep. And uh, I'm really excited about 1050 worship, which really is 1053 worship. Like all the intricacies <laughs> of being back in person yeah. is like a really beautiful thing. And, right. and being able to see one another again is going to be awesome. So June 13th, 1050 a.m., come worship with us in person. If you can't be in person in the sanctuary, you can be online. And I think right. that's the really beautiful thing yep. about where we're headed. Yep. All right, one more Sunday sit down next week. Join us for that at 1020 as well. Uh, and then again, grab a cup of coffee, come back in just a few minutes. We'll be back here for worship. Thanks, y'all.